So my uh, guest today is actor, uh, media personality, reality TV star, uh, Paul Danan. How are you doing? All right, man. How are you doing, Lewis? Really good, thank you. It's a weird time at the moment, isn't it, with the kind of the lockdown? How are you coping with it? I call it creative town, not <laughs> lockdown. Um, it's, uh, it's going really well. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's horrible, uh, the situation. I can't believe how many people we're losing every day. It's, it's a, like a... A bit, uh, like a nightmare like um you know a, a bad dream you know it's it's uh, it's actually hard to even contemplate what's really going on and for these poor families that are losing their loved ones every day it's just um it's quite horrific really um you know you never think it's going to be you and I, i've had family that have got ill from it thank god no one's passed away but i was interviewing jumping jack frost before um, on my podcast and he just lost his cousin to it he lost a friend the other day to it I mean it's getting close to home now um yeah I'm 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 finding it tough to to take in on take in all that that stuff but I'm trying not to get too my head into yeah. that because then it's not going to be good for me so I'm trying to use this time to be as creative as possible I know that's something you're doing really well, obviously, with a podcast. I know you get a lot of guests on and you're, you're doing a lot with that. And your podcasts are good because you're, you're very open and you always have been with your own struggles in life. And you're using that now. It's like you, you, you seem very strong at the moment and you're using that strength to, to help other people kind of build their own. So it, are you kind of glad that you're now in a, a situation where you can use your past experiences to actually really make a difference to, to people and show kind of, look, you know, I've been there. You, you can yeah. get through this. Absolutely. I mean, look, I, I need to turn this, the nightmare that I was in, which was the depths of despair in addiction, where I couldn't even get a day clean. And now I'm doing so well, I need to turn it on its head and, make, and turn it from a negative to a positive. And the only way I can do that is to embrace recovery, embrace this, this life of, 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 you know uh, away from that dark side that i was in and that that hell hole and um and and try and with it the way i can use it as a positive is number one i'm i'm uh, available i'm i'm honest now i'm 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 uh, present for my son for my parents um my career and myself and that's one well all those positives and the other one is that i've got a platform where i can reach out to others that are struggling that haven't quite got it yet or people that still are in it you know and might want to get it and see me and think because it's attraction rather than promotion um and some people can be like wow you know i'm attracted to that i i see this person go from that so that to that um, that to this and and also people that are in recovery but find it really difficult like myself because it's a daily daily reprieve it's a daily struggle you know I wake up sometimes and I feel my head's you know a bit whatever I don't want to go back but my head can play tricks on me and 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 say oh wouldn't it be nice to have a glass of wine or a cold beer mm -hmm. but I know that's that's rubbish because what the damage is done and once you put the first one in once you put the first one in and uh, it's all over and i i wouldn't know when i'm gonna come back i might not come back i mean for you it's you've because recently with media a lot of people have been speaking about situations uh, like caroline flack you know the the pressure she was under from the media and you know it's resulted in in a loss of a very young life now you went through that that kind of torment from the media you you know firsthand you couldn't do right for doing wrong you know everything you were doing was being uh you were having pictures taken of you you were having stories written how much did that affect you at the time when you were in every magazine and newspaper going you know that must have really i, I couldn't yeah. imagine what it did yeah it was painful and you know uh, also I mean, I chose a drug as well that didn't help it because, you know, you get you, you get paranoid as it is when you take cocaine. So can you imagine having all of that yeah. media and that frenzy around you as well? It just made it 10 times worse. So I locked myself indoors and I didn't want to come out and I ended up, you know, really, really in a bad way. And I feel like, it, yeah, they were they were horrible to me. And, and it was it was a nasty time. And the more pain I felt from that, the more I wanted to use and try and take away that pain by numbing it, by medicating it, 
with drink or drugs and um it's a vicious cycle you know because uh you, the more that happens the more you want to not feel and not and not you know take in all of that and uh, and you just want i just wanted to to be numb but it made it worse because you wake up the next day and it's still there but 10 yeah. times but it's much more uh you know, it, it, it's it, it's worse because you feel like crap. You you you, you know you you're not in a good space, and you've still got to deal with all of that those emotions. So it didn't help. But the good thing about with me is that I um I never wanted to commit suicide. I'm not that type of person. But the thing is, I didn't want to live, and I didn't want to die. So I was caught in the middle, and it was a horrible place to be in because. I didn't know what I wanted. And soon, any medication, any drugs, any drinks stops working. So you can't even take away that pain anyway in the end. So that's when I decided I need help. And I, and you have to ask for help. But sometimes it has to get painful enough. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, what I did want to quickly, just for people watching who don't um, know the previous stuff that you, you've done before, um, obviously you're, you're best known for your time in Hollyoaks. Now, I wanted to go back to that moment for you. Can you remember auditioning for the role and how you felt at the time? Because Hollyoaks uh, was was a massive show back then, um, like yeah. it is now. But I mean, can you remember how it felt auditioning? And did you ever anticipate to actually get the part? Um, no, I mean, I, I, I'd left drama school and, and I remember, you know, getting the call for, for my agent saying that there was a new show, a bit like Beverly Hills 90210, but a British version. And I'd watched it a little bit and thought, well, that's pretty cool. They look young, look a bit hip, look like, you know, good looking, nice girls. I thought, yeah, that'd be a cool show. And so I was excited to go to the audition in London. And I'd been training method acting actually at that time. So I was kind of really prepared for something, you know, that was big. And I went in there and I, I did, did. Um, Oh, we got you there. I, can you hear me? Yeah, we lost the sound uh, briefly then. Sorry. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I went in the audition and then I didn't hear back for a good few months. And um, um, I didn't think anything of it. And I just split up with my girlfriend. I was on the double decker bus in London, really down, feeling a bit rubbish. And they were like, you've got to go to Liverpool tomorrow. You're in this, it's like, uh, it's a callback, second stage for, for the character of Soul. So I went up there and there was a good 50 souls and 50 mums, 50 Genas, 50, you know, and it was all yeah. like elimination day. All through, the, all through the day, it was elimination, elimination. And, um, and I, they kept asking me, no, 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 you stay, you stay. And I was like, What's going on? I was just like chatting with this guy, and yeah. next minute you've got to go. It's like, see ya, good luck. I was like, all right, <laughs> maybe I've got a chance here, you know. And then by the end of the day, I'm like exhausted. I've gone in, read again, read again, and um, and then suddenly Phil Redmond comes, the guy that the made devised Grange Hill Brookside, um, oh. and then we go in the dog, the dog and the dog and the pond, and um. He, he, the mum who was northern, I'm like from Essex, and the, and the sister was from Essex. So we we're like, okay, it's a bit weird. And then they were like, right, you you you've been naughty, you've been out, the police have been after you. You come back into the pub, you've not seen your mum in ages. She's been worried, sick, action. And I was like, right, and I just went for it, and she slapped me around the face, and I was crying, she was crying. And it was all just improvised. And Phil Redmond was just like, yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. we didn't know who got it. We got on the train back to London. And um, the next day I got a call saying, pack your bags, you're going in Hollyoaks. And uh, you got the job. So I had to move up there for six months. And then it just carried on. And I was there for four years. And how many episodes did you actually do? Because when I looked online, it, it stated that you did two. But I know you're in it for a, a lot longer than, than two. <laughs> I did about 300, 400 wow. episodes. And I know recently a lot of fans have been calling for you to return to the show. Um, really? 
Yeah. So is that something you would actually consider yourself? Because it has been a long time, but you've seen it in, in EastEnders and Corrie. A character can come back and there's actually, when there's been such a long time apart, there's actually more reason to, to come back because there's a lot that's changed. Yeah. I'm still like thinking, why would it say, I was in it for four years, why would it say, say two episodes? I, I was think surprised. I, I think I remember I was up to 546 but when I left. So, wow. I mean, I, I wasn't in all of them, but I was in a good three, four hundred of yeah. them. So that's really, it's amazing how people can write shit, isn't it? Sorry. It was on in IMBD. It was uh, looking through it and I, I looked like what I remember watching. It was one of my favourite characters. I'm pretty sure it was more than two. Yeah, I lived there. I, I know. I went yeah. to work every day. So, yeah. But um, uh, anyway, yeah, um, it's amazing. There's a hashtag called Bring Back Soul. Um, and uh, the hashtag's gone, it went viral, and everyone wants Soul to come back. But, you know, it's up to the producers, man. I mean, I'd, I'd definitely give it a go. And with, obviously, when you left Hollyoaks, um, you, you just said then you trained in acting, method acting, um, and it's something you could see that you were passionate about. But because of your personality and the fact you were popular and, and the people loved you, reality TV was something that came calling um, in regards to Celebrity Love Island and, and some of the other shows that you've done. Were you ever dubious about doing that? Because you've trained as an actor. It's something you took very seriously. Did you ever feel that this could take you in a different direction? And actually... You know what? Yeah, I did. I, I mean, you know, it did do that. It did jeopardise my acting career for a few years. Um, but I didn't think about it because I didn't know what reality was. All I knew is yeah. that I was going to an island in Fiji and I was getting paid a lot of money to be with some really fit girls. So I wasn't <laughs> going to say no. Um, and I didn't know what reality was. I was even saying to them, so what part do I play? And they were like, no, you play you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just saw it like I was on holiday with, with the boys. And um, little did I know that I was going to make such a big splash in it that, that people were like, you know, I, I became more famous in that than I did in four years in Hollyoaks. Um, so it was a massive, massive deal. If I would have kept in the background a bit more, maybe my acting career would have, would have, would have been okay at the time. Um, but I, you know, that's me. I, 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 I cause good TV. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, I just, that's, that, you know, I'm not going to go on it and just be all like quiet. Yeah. So, um, so, it, it did it did make that dent in in uh casting directors from being a bit like well he's a reality star now and but first and foremost i was thinking but i'm an actor so it was hard it was hard and i'd been in la before celebrity love island doing stuff out there um but it changed the direction of my career definitely for a while and that that continued and um, through your time on reality tv you even got a bit of a reputation in regards to I think they used to call it is it dangerous Danan and when Thanks, you yeah. yeah and when you kind of watched various programs that you're in you you come across as a such a genuine kind-hearted uh real guy so when you could get that kind of title as dangerous Danan did you ever did that ever upset you when you would would see that in the papers um no because I mean <laughs> I I can be a bit clumsy and a bit dangerous and things can happen. So I, it, it depends how you take the word dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous can mean just as in, you know, he can be dangerous, be careful. Like, it's not like I'm a, a, a nasty person. It's more of like the things that I can do by accident can be actually quite dangerous. Like me, Callum Afran did a show called Callum Afran and Dangerous Danan. And I'll be honest, I was the one that made the title up. So they had Callum and Fran, they didn't know what to call me. So I said, well, what about Dangerous Danan? Because they were going to call it something else that was similar. But it didn't yeah. really make sense. It was to do with um, Desperate Dan, the uh, character from um, uh, the, the comics, yeah. um, uh, from Beano. So, um, so I was like, well, what about Dangerous Danan? And, and when we were doing the show, we got to shoot guns in Arizona. And I was very dangerous doing that. Let's just say, <laughs> don't, don't put a gun in my hand. So, so, you know, I earned the title and then I suppose it just stuck and it just, there's a ring to it. So I don't take it personally because actually I was the one that, you know, you made it yeah. up in the first place. And throughout the years, you've done various reality shows, but a couple of years ago, we saw you take part in Celebrity Big Brother. Now, this was a, a huge show 
to kind of come back to. And we, we all got to see a different side of you. We, we've known you for the shows that you've done. And then all of a sudden, you've got this real kind of spiritual, calm, chilled. And it was nice to see that side because it's like you've done all this growing up. And we saw that the loving side that you had. So when they came and gave you the opportunity to be in the show, were you excited to go and show the public, this is me now, I've had a, a few years away, this is where I'm at? That's exactly right, exactly that. I, um, I, I thought it was time to show the difference. You know, you mature, you grow up. Um, things things were, were different. I, um, you know, I had a son um and um i he's four now and he was only one i think one and a half when when i went in there and um you know you you change you grow up you learn from your mistakes and yeah you know i didn't drink on there i was i was uh i was uh, you know i was a mature pool and um I, hopefully people got to see the difference and the 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 side of me that you know i wanted to portray there were times when people pissed me off yeah, yeah. but you know um yeah, that's just being in a house 24 7 locked locked in in a house with 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 people you don't know yeah personalities are going to clash um but it was a chance for me to get yeah i was very excited about doing it well and i'm glad i did it let's say big brother's the king of mind games so was was that something you struggled with because it's almost like they plot what they're going to do and then they know it's going to cause arguments and tensions so how did you find that because like you said it did get heated at various uh, stages there's a lot of big personalities in there so what for you was the biggest struggle during your time in the house um well not seeing my boy um but at the same time i didn't really struggle to be honest that much um i actually had a really good time i've been to i just know there's no a secret i've been to many rehabs so that's where you're it's like a like a stretch like you know yeah. it's like it's not like prison but it's like you know you you you're you're in a place that you can't leave and i've done that for months at a time uh many times so the big brother house was was easy um yeah. the mind games yeah that was annoying when you had to vote for people when you got voted out and people were like calling you this that and the other you know but that was just too i, I just didn't like being wound up i think and um you never know who's talking about you and but you know i get on with everyone usually so i didn't find i didn't really find any of it hard i've got to admit i found it quite quite enjoyable and for people now um tell us a little bit about what you do uh, on your podcasts what they're about and where people can actually access them so yeah so um i i've just finished a play in the west end called time um, I've got a film out at the moment, well, it's coming out called Are We Dead Yet, which is a, a massive film with a man like Hacks, Professor Green. Um, it's a, a comedy urban horror. Um, I've got a film out at the moment called Dollhouse, which is a horror movie. And I'm about to film time as soon as we get out of lockdown um, and do another play called Dying to be Funny, which is um, a play about Dapper, Dapper Laughs. Um, uh, stand-up career and suicide is for mental health and I started a podcast about a year and a half ago called Paul Denan the morning after and it's stories from back in the day um, sometimes I get guests on um, talk about like they could be my friend my brother my my, my celebrity friends whatever anyone that's got uh, stories about me or stories that they can tell about themselves where they've been through addiction mental health um, and stuff like that and then I, we, we did did it last year and we went to number one in the iTunes charts and then I I had a bit of a, uh, a blip in my head and I went and got some help and then I've come back this year and I started it in January and it's just gone berserk. Every day in lockdown, we decided to do an episode. Um, and I interview, because it's so easy to get people at the moment because they're all at home. So I, I'm interviewing the best people ever. Um, so I just interviewed Jumping Jack Frost, as I said. I've had Will Meller on. Um, I've had the Hollyoaks boys, um, Finn and Lewis, which is Ben Hull and James Redmond. Davinia Taylor used to be in it. I'm part of the Primrose Hill gang. Um, I, uh, I've got Sean Williamson, Barry from EastEnders oh, today. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow I've got DJ Rap. On Monday I've got um, a big, this is an exclusive, I don't know when you're putting this out, but I've got Mega Man from So Solid Crew. Um, oh, wow. 
and um, and 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 I'm just getting people after people. Darren Day, Katie Price. I mean, I, honestly, just loads. They just want to come on, talk about mental health, talk about their careers, talk about you know um, their struggles. We help people that are in isolation that are struggling right now with anxiety, depression. Uh, they want to use, they want to drink, and we're trying to help them to kind of find exercise, find meditation, find positive vibes and listen to podcasts listen to go online meetings a a n a c a they're everywhere and there is help out there you know um suicide prevention you know all of that stuff and we just talk and it's really been helping me it helps the guests uh, it helps the listeners and you can get it on spotify on apple podcasts acast all the podcast platforms and it comes out every night at midnight um and honestly, we're, you know, we're number five in the iTunes charts again, and it's just brilliant. And I'm doing it all from my bedroom. That's incredible, because I, I know I've seen the reaction um, on social media. And that's when I, when I got in touch, because, you know, people are not just because of the entertainment side, but it's really helping people. And the people are looking to this because the lockdown's causing a lot of people to feel anxious uh, and depressed because, you know, they're locked in. It's an unknown situation. And your podcasts and the topics that you're you're talking about are really kind of making that difference as well. So this is why I wanted to, to get you on today so people can see what you're doing with your time and how it's helping other people. Yeah, yeah, it really, it's amazing. The, 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 the emails and the messages I'm getting is phenomenal and people go on their morning runs and they'll listen to it or they'll wake up and listen to it or they'll go to sleep and listen to it or, you know, they'll just play it while they're in the garden or whatever and, it's uh it's it's funny it's 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 yeah. you know you laugh you cry you you, you get information um you know it, it, it's it's a bit it's diverse but it's cool and you know uh, and you can get like there's a level that the guests are really kind of the guests i've been getting is it's quite high caliber and i'm blown away by the, re the reaction of of the people that want to do it and the and the reaction of the people that are listening and you know, I'm glad that I committed to it. And I also do a promotional video for it every day. So I have to think of funny videos to kind of promote it. So we had yeah. Tama Hassan. So I had to do a scene out of Football Factory or whatever, or pretend that, you know, some neighbours were annoying me and I was getting all gangster on them. But actually there was no one there. I'm just, I'm just coming up with stuff. And look at the TikTok vibe. Everyone's going mad yeah. with that. Um, I can't even work it out yet, but I'm, I'll slowly get there. But yeah, man, it's it's great and it keeps me busy because I'd go crazy. Like with my ADHD, I'd go mad if I was doing nothing all day. Well, Paul, I've got to say a massive thank you for taking the time to talk to us, but to open up about your career. And um, what's brilliant, which I think you should take a, a lot of pride from, is the fact that, you know, you've gone through what you've gone through and you look at you now, you know, you're using what you've gone through to help other people. And you've turned into this like incredible guy that, that does so much for other people. And it's so nice to see. And it's, you know, nice that you're doing something so creative as well. Thank you so much, Lewis. They were really kind words. And, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, I really, um, you know what you saying that and just kind of, it's hard to believe like my self worth was really low. My self esteem was on the floor and it's slowly getting better. And I think the more I help others, the more it helps me, you know, um, to get self-esteem you have to do yeah. esteemable acts and um that's what i'm trying to do and trying to be a better person so um thank you lewis no thank you very much